Is Los Angeles a good place to live? If you're thinking about moving to LA and need some more information, here are nine things that you need to know. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is Darren Kriz. I'm a native Angelino and local real estate agent here in the greater Los Angeles area, helping people every single day buy, sell, and invest in property here in LA. If this is your first time on my channel and want to learn about all things Los Angeles, you've come to the right place. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about if LA is a good place to live. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Like I said, I'm getting calls, texts, and emails every single day about people relocating to Los Angeles. But let's Let's get right into this one. So first off, the basics out of the way. Yes, it is expensive. In fact, the cost of living in Los Angeles is about 43% higher than the national average. It is not cheap, but there are still people moving here. As I said, I'm still getting calls every day of people that have interest in relocating to Los Angeles currently. But obviously, California and Los Angeles is gonna be more expensive than a lot of other parts in the world. Home prices are expensive, taxes are expensive, food is expensive, rent is expensive. And I have done cost of living videos in the past. If you want to check those out, go to my channel. And there's a lot to touch on when it comes to expense, but let's move on to another reason. And number two, I would say take advantage of the outdoors. And one reason why is because Los Angeles is known for having some of the best weather in the entire nation. People move out here for the sunny LA days. They were getting about 330 times around the year. And when you're here, don't be cooped up in your room all day or cooped up in the office all day. Take advantage of that sunny LA weather. Go on a hike, go to the park, go on a walk with your dog. Join a local adult league. There's a lot of softball leagues going on around here. Go to the beach. We have some of the best beaches in the nation here in Los Angeles. Or you can play golf. We have so many nice golf courses all throughout the county. That's what I do in my spare time. As an ex-college baseball player turned amateur golfer, I find golf to be super enjoyable and competitive to play with some of my friends and clients as a great hobby to do out here, especially because you can do it all year round and enjoy the weather, whether that's in the hot summer or in the good temperature in the winter. I am a big fan of LA winters, December and January. I like the cold better than the hot and it, it doesn't even get that cold. It gets like 50 degrees and us Angelinos do complain about it being too cold. Whereas in Chicago, it's going to be below zero most likely. A third thing that you need to know is there are a lot of temptations and it's not that easy to stay out of the way of these temptations, whether that's nightlife, whether that is referring to different people that can tempt you to do things that you might not want to do. Make sure you surround yourself with the right people that are, are going to only live lift you up and achieve the goals that you have set out for yourself and is the reason that you're moving to LA. LA is obviously known as the entertainment capital of the world, as having a great nightlife. There's something to do every single night in LA. I know a lot of people that move out here and just get sucked into there being events every night or every other night. Their friends are dragging them to this thing, that thing, and they just don't have time for themselves to focus on what they really want to do. Now there are a lot of good people in LA. Don't let the media tell you that LA is just full of scumbags, full of ego egotistical people. Obviously there are those kinds of people, but you have to spot it early. You have to spot what intentions people are in it for early on in your relationship with them. Who's being genuine, who's not. Don't fall into the Hollywood trap, the Hollywood stigma of people just wanting something out of you. And that'll go into our next point, and that is four, don't believe everyone. And this can be good and bad. Don't believe what your cousins, friends, aunts, sisters, daughters, husband tells you she thinks about LA just from her own personal experience. Just because she was in LA one Tuesday night and had a horrible experience with a couple of drivers on the street and she hates everyone and everything about LA and she tells her family about that and now you think LA is horrible because of Aunt Susie's experience. Don't let that just ruin your whole perception of what LA actually is. Experience it for yourself. Get to know the city, get to know the people and understand where you truly fit in. This goes with everything. Do your own research, visit a few times and don't just let social media or the media dictate your your perception on LA. And that's also a life lesson. All right, the next thing is number five, there are so many neighborhoods to pick. When living here, one person can say, yeah, I'm from LA, but you actually live in Porter Ranch. And Porter Ranch is not the same thing as someone that might be from Pico Rivera. Those are very different communities, about an hour and a half apart. And both families in those specific neighborhoods definitely live completely different lifestyles. Living in Venice and living in Glendale is not the same thing. Living in Westchester and living in Southgate is not the same thing. So everyone from LA is going to have a bunch of different experiences and there are just so 
many neighborhoods to live and choose from. Which is why I know a lot of people that buy and sell multiple houses out here or they'll rent every other year while investing in property out here as well. And like I said, I help people relocate to and from LA every single day. So if you have a question about a specific community or neighborhood, let me know, contact me in the description below. Finding a place that's right for you might be challenging in this massive city, but you will be off to a great start just from learning about LA from my channel here. And with the traffic out here, make sure you live in a city that it's not gonna be that big of a problem. Or maybe beach access is important to you, so maybe you wanna live on the west side. Or if you just love the heat, you love the residential neighborhood, suburban vibe, where to raise your family, definitely live in the San Fernando Valley because that's where I grew up and I think I turned out all right. Or if you want the city vibe, the hustle and bustle, maybe just move to the middle of the city, the heart of West Hollywood, or downtown LA, maybe Santa Monica, or even Koreatown. But if you've already lived enough life and just want to settle down, maybe retire out in LA. There are definitely places for you as well. If you have a little bit of money and a higher budget to spend, you can live over in the Pacific Palisades. You can head over to Encino and live a peaceful private life over there. Or even just go to Beverly Hills if that's where you wanna be. Shout out Weezer. Next on this list, number six, is that the smog will not kill you. This might be a surprise to people that aren't from here because maybe you see a picture of LA and automatically you're gonna think, oh, the smog, the smog is going to kill me. I can't move out there. There's too many cars. There's too much smog in the air. I can't breathe in that. Well, sure, there is some haze that hangs over the city at times due to all the traffic and somewhat pollution that has been going on in the city. But that being said, emission control laws have vastly improved since the 1970s. In the description below, I will leave a link to a couple websites that will show you that air quality has actually improved because of these emission controls in the last 50 or so years. So just because you see the stereotypical round setting in the background of downtown LA doesn't mean that the air quality is horrible and you're gonna die 20 years earlier than someone living in Omaha, Nebraska. That's kind of similar to one of the points I said earlier when you should not believe everyone and everything you see. Don't believe that the smog is gonna kill you. You can breathe just fine around here. On to the next one is that LA has the best pro sports teams in the world. I had to throw this one in there, being a diehard Los Angeles sports fan my entire life. I feel like I could brag a little bit about this one, but even if you're not a big sports fan, I'm sure you're going to have a friend or know people that's going to call you up and invite you to one of the games, one of the Dodger games, Laker games, just because all year round there will be sporting events going on in Los Angeles. So we have the Lakers, Clippers, Sparks that all share the crypto arena. We have the Rams and Chargers that share the brand new SoFi Stadium, which is where the 2028 Olympics are going to be held. LA is going to be booming. I can't wait. There's also the LA Kings, LA Galaxy, LAFC. Last but not least, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Also notice how I didn't say the Angels or any of those Anaheim teams because Anaheim isn't even in the LA County. I don't even know how the Angels got the name, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. That doesn't even make any sense. They're about an hour outside of Los Angeles, not even in the LA County. So that's just something that grinds my gears. Let's not talk about them. But I mentioned Dodgers last but not least because growing up in LA, my dad and his brother actually got season tickets for the Los Angeles Dodgers back in the day when my dad could initially drive a car. And we had those season tickets threw up. When I was just born, I went to a game, I think I was a month old. I have photos of myself at Dodger games. I wish I could. I wish I had those photos, I put them up on the screen right here. But LA sports teams have been a huge part of my family and my life. Used to go to many Dodger games back in the day, as well as Laker games. I spent many nights going to games in the left field pavilion at Dodger Stadium, which is where you will see the true Dodger fans out there. But let's move on. Next is that earthquakes and fires are not as bad as you think. It is honestly crazy to me how when I get a new client, one of the immediate questions they will ask is earthquakes and fires. Is that gonna affect my home? What happens when there's an earthquake or a fire. Well, honestly, I don't really watch the news, but they must blow up these stories out of proportion because sure, earthquakes and fires are a concern to have in your home, but there's earthquake insurance, fire insurance, but these probably only affect homes once every few years, and that's only in specific homes up in the hills, usually in the northern east, far out corner of the San Fernando Valley, maybe Santa Clarita areas as well, or a little more inland. There's only a select few homes that might be affected 
once every five years or so. It's really just a small percentage of homes that will be affected by earthquakes or fires. The last major, major earthquake was in 1994, the Northridge earthquake that I'm sure a lot of you have remembered. My family experienced it firsthand. They were in the center of the Northridge earthquake. Thank God all of them came out safe and healthy. But there are a lot of wild stories that I heard from the earthquake that affected the valley very much so in 1994. But if this something that happened about 30 years ago is going to affect the entirety of where you're going to move, then maybe you should find another place to live because earthquakes are gonna happen. I've experienced dozens and dozens of them in my lifetime. And it's just something you kind of have to live with, but it is not as bad as you think. I can promise you that. And the last one on this list, welcome to Los Angeles. I would say number nine is explore, explore, explore. You live in the Golden State, in La La Land, one of the best areas in the entire world with more things to do than you can possibly imagine. Explore, do something unique at least once a week. Try new things, try new foods, go to new places. I promise you, you cannot experience it all. Even as a local real estate agent myself, I try to do many different things in every city just so I can learn the areas and I'm almost getting there to where I can, you can give me a street cornering. I could tell you exactly the zip code that it's in. But this city is so massive, go to some museums, go to some concerts, go to sporting events, like I said. You only live one life, and why not experience it in the greatest city in the world, not biased whatsoever. But growing up out here, I've come to know and love Los Angeles for its good, for its bad, and for everything in between. But those were nine things that you need to know before coming out to Los Angeles. Let me know what you thought of the list. Leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. it helps out the algorithm so more people that want information about all things LA can see my videos in the future. Like I said, my name is Darren Kriz. I'm a native Angelino and local real estate agent helping people every single day buy, sell, and invest in property in Los Angeles. If, if that's you or someone you know, let me know. Here's my information. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Also subscribe to see more weekly videos of all things Los Angeles. If you wanna know something about a specific city, go to more of my videos, click a recommended video. I highly recommend it. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm happy to help, I will answer everyone. All in all, is Los Angeles a good place to live? I'll let you decide that for yourself when you come out here. See you on the next one, guys. Peace. <laughs>